I want to introduce you all to a fun but lesser known and smaller budget movie, No Name on the Bullet, starring the legendary Audie Murphy. This is another reinterpretation of the most basic American myth, the mysterious stranger who rides into town. His arrival reveals problems in the community. The mysterious stranger solves those problems, usually with a smoking gun. The mysterious stranger then leaves, as mysterious as he was when he arrived. But this movie asks two intriguing questions. When does the good guy, the hero, stop being a hero and become the villain? And when is it immoral to stay your hand, to not kill? Let me set the scene for y'all. John Gant, as played by Audie Murphy, arrives in this sleepy little town where he's met by the local doctor who gives John Gant a tour of the town where he gives a glowing review of the community. It's a wonderful place with wonderful people just waiting for the right opportunity to become an important town in the area. John Gant is also introduced to the doctor's father, the town's blacksmith, and the doctor's fiance, who's clearly intrigued by this soft-spoken, polite young man who exudes a quiet menace. But within minutes of his arrival, the entire town is freaking out. John Gant is a known man. He's a gun for hire, 24 kills to his name. And he's been hired to find and eliminate a thief and a murderer. He doesn't know who the murderer is, but he has clues. And those clues have led him to this little town. This is where things get interesting. John Gant spends the majority of the movie sitting in a cafe, sipping coffee and watching the world go by. But there's a lot of people in town, some very surprising people who have guilty consciences the sheriff and his deputy, the mayor, the judge, and various shop owners are all convinced Gant might be after them. And Paranoia starts to set in. And then the body starts stacking up. At a certain point, the community becomes fed up with the violence and the killing. But they blame Gant for all their problems. Before he arrived, this was a nice, friendly little town. If we can get him to leave... No more problems. So they form a mob led by the doctor. They're going to get Gant to leave town one way or another. But when confronted by Gant's quiet menace, they decide, well, maybe it's not such a bad idea if Gant stays in town after all. Gant convinces everybody he'll leave when he's good and ready. He'll be good and ready once he finds who he's looking for. Eventually, Gant gathers enough clues to locate his target. I'm going to be intentionally vague here to avoid spoilers. I mean, after all, I am making this video to try to convince you all to go watch the movie. Gant's modus operandi is to get his targets to challenge him, to avoid the courts, legal issues. Gant tries to convince his target that he might have had his way with a woman that's close to the target. The target becomes so incensed, he has a massive heart attack, dies on the spot. Gant's job now done, he goes to leave town, but he's confronted by the doctor. And in the ensuing fight, the doctor throws a hammer that breaks Gant's gun arm. Gant's able to hold a gun with his other hand, convinces everybody to back off, gets on his horse, and rides off, leaving the town to pick up the pieces. Who's the hero and who's the villain? We have a pretty clear-cut case. The doctor is the good guy and the hired killer is the baddie, right? 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 Seeing how I've raised the question, things can't be that simple. So let's dig into this moral quagmire, shall we? What is John Gant guilty of, exactly? He admits to being a hired gun. And he's in town looking for his next target. Who's he looking for? A murderer and a thief. The waters are starting to get murky. 
When you have spotty law enforcement, you have a situation where people can escape the consequences of their crimes by simply fleeing the area, going someplace else and starting their life over. This led to the tradition of outlawing, meaning you live outside the law. Anybody has the right to kill you at will. To further incentivize the killing of outlaws, bounties were offered, monetary rewards. But you say, that was all legal. Government's doing that. Nuh uh. Outlaw means outlaw. That means people had the right to offer a financial reward for the death of outlaws, private citizens. You see how thin the line we're walking here? How murky things are getting? If we learn that John Gant's target was tried, convicted, and then declared outlaw for fleeing, that changes everything. In the 19th century American West, the time and place of this movie, what John Gant was doing was legal and socially accepted. More importantly, he would have been seen as morally righteous. Eliminating murderers was seen as a social good. The fact that he got paid for it? Who cares? But we haven't been told that the target has been declared outlaw. There's a lot in this story that we haven't been told. But let's set that aside and accept that John Gant is a hired gun in town to murder someone. What exactly does he do? What is he guilty of? What crime does he commit that's worthy of being condemned to death for? John Gant doesn't kill anyone. In fact, he doesn't even shoot anyone. Not even the sheriff when the sheriff tries to shoot him in the back. He just shoots the gun out of his hand. Gant was punished given a death sentence, not for anything he actually did, but because of his thoughts, his intentions. So now we know the rules of the game. We're going to hold people accountable based upon their thoughts and intentions. So what are the thoughts and intentions of the townsfolk? They've just learned that hiding amongst them are murderers, thieves, and other types of criminals. These ne'er-do-wells have been using their social positions, elected officials, shop owners, and the such, to hide and cover up their criminal activities. They've also used these positions to harm and even kill anybody who becomes a threat to them. Do they want to round them up, turn them in, seek justice for their victims? <laughs> Not in the least. Their main concern their nice, quiet little town isn't as quiet as it used to be. Instead, the community decides they want to get rid of the source of all these disturbances, one way or another. So led by the doctor, they form a mob, and they confront Gant and tell him, get out of town or else. Let me ask you all a question. What would have happened if the mob had been a little less afraid of Gant? Well, I can give you the historic answer, beat to death or hung, depending on the mood of the mob. So let me get this straight. The town just learns that they have murderers and other criminals in their midst. But instead of trying to bring these criminals to justice, they confront the person who's uncovering these criminals, revealing their activities, and they tell him, Get out of town or die. And somehow, Gant is the baddie in this story. He's the one deserving of death. But Gant rode out of town, right? Well, that's where the movie leaves us with one last moral conundrum. In the final fight between Gant and the doctor, the doctor breaks Gant's arm with a hammer. The doctor backs off when he learns who hired Gant. That's a little twist I'll let you all experience for yourselves. In one last attempt to gain the moral high ground, the doctor says, unlike you, I'm not a killer. I've allowed you to live. And Gant says, you think so? You didn't break my arm. You broke my elbow. My gunfighting days are over. 
I have enemies. And when they find out I can't draw a gun, they're going to come for me. I'm not going to live six months. You've killed me without having to bother to get your hands dirty. We have a dilemma here. Who is more moral? Gant, who will kill you, but face to face in a shootout, or the doctor, who allows a wounded man to leave town, knowing full well that those wounds will lead to the man's death, and the doctor is the one who inflicted those wounds. Murky waters indeed. I'm not taking sides, advocating for any position. Like the movie, I'm just asking questions. Questions you'll have to come up with your own answers. So tell me in the comments down below, is Gant the baddie? Is there anyone that can claim the high moral ground in this sordid little tale? At any rate, I hope I've given you all something to think about. And until next time, you all be safe. And I'd appreciate it if you liked and subscribed as well. Please like and subscribe. Please leave a comment.